And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Thunderbirds, and this is the 50 years anniversary cooperative board game. Now, Thunderbirds is something that obviously, since it's 50 years old, is not something that's super popular today. And I know, the last time I said this on one of our shows, I got several emails from people saying, yes, it really is that popular, but no, it really isn't. And that being said, because I had barely heard of it when it came out, and not just my experience, but a lot of people I've talked to. Now, that being said, I'm not saying it's bad. I did try to go watch some of it so that I could, you know, play the game and understand the game better. And it's just not for me. I'm just not a big fan of the whole puppet thing. Um, but, hey, a lot of people are interested in it, and that's going to bring a lot of people to the game. However, I don't come in with any negative preconceptions because, first of all, I think the theme is cool. But secondly, this game is designed by Matt Leacock, and he is one of the best cooperative game designers that there is out there. So very intrigued to see how this is. I'm coming at it from, obviously, someone who doesn't know all the Thunderbird lore, but there's going to be a lot of people who are coming with that at it. So let's see how that plays out. Now, first off, I want to say that for some reason the white space station wasn't included in my box. No big deal. It would just sits here anyway. But the game comes with different vehicles for the different characters, and they're also little pegs. In fact, we, when we put the blue peg in the pink car over here, the fab car, it brought back some memories of life. Um, but anyhow, each of these ships is different. This one actually has a removable thing, which is pretty cool because it can carry both this and it can carry the fab car, or it can carry two of these uh, things that you can build over the course of the game inside it. So that's a pretty cool thing. Now each of these ships has a specific movement, and they also each have a specific, you know, they're Thunderbird 1, Thunderbird 4. I can never remember which one is which. The little numbers are written on them, but they're hard to read. Um, the, the movement that they can move is up here in the corner. You can see here the blue moves 3. Green moves two, the orange moves three, the yellow and the pink each move one. The space station doesn't move. The orange itself is a rocket ship, and it's the only one that can move up in outer space, and that's actually the only place it can move, so it moves along this orange line for different things. Now, the whole game is basically based on you stopping three schemes of the evil bad guy, the hood. And he's up here. You can see him on this track here, and he's moving down this track, and there's different things that will cause him to move as time goes by. And he has these three schemes. If he ever gets to one of these spots with the skull and the crossbones, and you haven't yet finished the scheme that that's hooked to, then he wins. And if he gets to the end, before you get to finish scheme three, he wins too, of course. So he's going to be moving as the game progresses, so you're going to need to be stopping him. Now on a player's turn, they're going to take actions, and they have uh, different actions that they can take from. There's also some free actions. They have three actions that you can take, but there's free actions like if I'm in here, I might decide to get out of this vehicle and get into the green one and drive that one. And you especially will need to do that if you're playing with less than the full complement of players. So you can switch vehicles and jump around and load vehicles into here if I'm going to take him with me. So one of the actions is moving somewhere. So if I have this, I might be able to move this too. So I move it over here to the Indian Ocean. You can move the different things around. And that's a lot of what you're doing is trying to maneuver things in a, into play. You can also draw a fab card. These are cards that will help you. They do special things. For example, here it is. A single player may give two of their bonus tokens to another player. There's different bonus tokens, and I can give some to somebody else. Or maybe this one here, any single player may swap up with three of their bonus tokens for the same number of bonus tokens from the supply. These are great cards. You can draw one as an action, but every time you draw one as an action, you will move the hood one space along the track, so you should only do this in desperate times. And then you can scan, which if you're in Thunderbird 5, you can move one of these disasters one space over backwards if there's an empty space. Now, these disasters are kind of the crux of the game. You are trying to solve these disasters. Why are you trying to solve these disasters? Because disasters will give you tokens. This gives you a plus two token and a token of your choice. And tokens are what you will need to solve 
the schemes. If you can see here, this scheme here, the mask of intrigue, means I need to have somebody in the North Pacific Ocean with two of the pink re-roll tokens. Um, later on, if I the harder scheme here, the Shroud of Fear, I'll need someone with the North Atlantic with two of the yellow tokens, and I also need someone with the mole and the laser cutter in North America. And then scheme three, and these schemes are different, and you can make the game harder by having, you know, you can play with schemes two, three, and four, or three, four, and five. Here I need four of those plus two tokens and at the sun, and two of the yellow tokens in the North Pacific. So you need to stop these schemes, or these disasters down here, to get these, um, these tokens. But you also have to stop these disasters, because if they go all the way to the end here, and they're pushed off, you will lose the game. Now to stop a disaster, you will need to be in a specific area. So to stop the attack of the alligators, I need to be in South America. Then I need to roll a 10 or higher on two dice. Now these dice, the highest number on them is five. Instead of a six, there's a hood advances. And when you roll that, the hood will move one. So you have to be careful. It doesn't happen right when you roll it, but at the end of your turn, if it's still there, um, you will have a problem. Now you can mitigate this. There are re-roll tokens, which lets you re-roll the dice. There are plus two tokens. Um, but still, you'll notice that the only way I'm gonna get a 10 is by rolling two fives, which can be very difficult. However, if I have the Thunderbird four, the yellow, one in that region, I add three to my roll. And if I have the character Virgil in that region, I'll add two to my roll. So let's say I had Virgil in the Thunderbird in that region. That's plus five. That's a much easier thing to do. And here eight plus five is 13. So I succeeded. I beat this. This is removed and I get the rewards. If you fail, you can spend another action and try again. There's no really negative thing to failing other than that you don't conquer it. And so there's different ones here. Sometimes they just require people to be in the spots, but usually they require you to do a specific role. Um, like for example, this one here, the mineral eaters is an eater role. You just need to have Alan and John both at the asteroid belt. So much of your uh, turns are going to be setting up to take out these disasters. Now I mentioned the characters. Each player is a character and each character is one of the characters from the show and they have a special ability. Like, for example, this guy has plus two to space rescues, and he can spend an action to draw one of those plus two tokens. And then there's Lady Penelope and John Tracy. And John Tracy almost, I feel like he may be one of the most important characters in the game because he can ignore a hood result for each rescue roll if you're on Thunderbird 5. So that could actually save you uh, from losing the game. We got Gordon Tracy, Scott Tracy, and Virgil Tracy, and again, each of these has different things. Like for example, he adds two to land rescues, and he can draw one of those cog tokens if you're in Thunderbird 2. Each of the tokens are needed to solve the different, uh, basically the schemes that the hood is coming up, but they're all their special things. You'll notice this one here, I mentioned already you can reroll, this one adds two. You can spend these to draw fab cards without moving the hood. You can spend these cogs to build these little things here. Um, this one here, for example, is the Thunder Riser. And once you build these, you'll be able to, some of these are needed to solve different things, so you'll have to build them. And then this lightning bolt gives you an extra action. And so players are going to take their turns. Eventually you're going to win or lose. You win again by finishing off each of the three schemes that are up there. You lose by the hood getting to one of these before it goes off or getting to the end. Or by having this thing completely filled with the different disasters. That's how you play. Now I played the game with some people who do like the Thunderbirds and do understand it and they enjoyed it. I've also played the game with people who do not know anything about Thunderbirds and they also enjoyed the game as did I. Now I do think that knowing the lore and liking the Thunderbirds is going to highly increase how much you like this game. As it is for me, I think it is a fine cooperative game Although there's nothing, nothing super exceptional about it. I think things like Pandemic and even Forbidden Island are better for Matt Leacock, which don't have these licenses. But the game itself is very intriguing. Essentially, like all cooperative games, it is a puzzle. You are trying to get things to the right spots. And there are some interesting things. I, I mean, I like the rolling of the dice and the different bonuses. And I can get out of this vehicle and pilot that vehicle. And I need to go into outer space and do that. There are some times where no matter what you do, you cannot win. You know, in the, 
in the deck itself, in the disaster deck, there are several the hood advances cards, and he will move no matter what. But when you roll the dice, he can move. In fact, I think you uh, honestly, the one character who can avoid that is probably a character you should take for your first game because that makes a big difference. You roll double hood moves, you could honestly lose the game. So there's that. I like the idea of picking up the different things. I like the fab cards. I think that they're, they're cool cards to take. Um, I like the different vehicles. The plastic gives it a cool thing going in outer space. It has kind of this kitsch feeling to it, which is good. There are a few problems with the game. One is there are many times where you essentially have nothing to do on your turn. Your turn is basically doing three actions and then drawing another disaster card, moving everything over. And it moves over whether it's pushed or not. Um, and that's fine, but sometimes I wish there was like something to do. Sometimes like you're like, all right, I move over here. Now I'm here, we can do the roll, but before we can do the roll, we need to get that other bonus in place. And that's not till your turn. So what can I do? Well, I can draw a fab card, but that moves the hood, so that's not worth it. So what else can I do? And the answer is nothing. Comparatively to Pandemic, if there's nothing to do, you could still move around and do cubes. You could do something usually in Pandemic. I almost wish there was something here that you could kind of, a throwaway action that you could do when you had nothing else um, to do. And that happened more than a few times. That was something that happened regularly where someone would go, ah, I can only spend one action this turn. And then there's other times where the luck of those dice is going to infuriate you because you have the bonuses in play and you roll badly, you roll again badly, and it's like, ah! I don't mind that as much, but that would be a problem for some folks. Now, I say those things, but I do enjoy the idea of the game. It is going to be kind of a takeoff of Pandemic and Forbidden Island and Forbidden Desert. Those are other games Matt Leacock has designed, and it's the same thing here. Crisis, go, solve crisis, another crisis, go, solve crisis, do this and ultimately be solving a bigger crisis. That's the same thing with Pandemic. You know, you're going and stopping the cubes, stopping the cubes, and ultimately you're trying to cure the disease. The same thing here. And here, it's very easy to level it up the game. You know, that level, the level three scheme is much harder than the level one. So if you play with three level three schemes, it's very difficult. And even on the basic level, this is not an easy game. So the difficulty is there. So overall, should you get the game? Well, if you're a Thunderbirds fan, definitely. If you're a Matt Leacock fan, definitely. If you like cooperative games, then this is one you should, I would try it probably before buying it, but it certainly is interesting and it does a little bit differently with the different vehicles and switching out of them. And it ultimately, if you're a fan of Pandemic or, or games in that genre, I think this one will fit there. I enjoyed it. I still don't get the Thunderbirds love, and that's okay. Uh, I think the theme is cool, um, and it has some nice components, and they use a lot of artwork from the series. So that's Thunderbirds 50 Years, the cooperative board game. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.